Hello again. I've got a few leftover bits of video that don't have a home of their own, and so I'm just going to compile them into this one quick update. I'm going to take a look at the coolant system on the Summit lathe, and another quick look at some organizational tips. And that's going to be it. Uh, in the meantime, I'm working on putting together the first video for the beam engine and for uh, a depth of cut video that I'm working on. All right, a couple of comments on organization in the workspace. So I have this tool chest, which is situated close by the lathe, and that has a whiteboard mounted to the back of it. And then I also have this rolling cart, and this is a modified rolling cart. You can get these wire carts from Home Depot and other places. And uh, what I've done is made a couple of modifications to it. The modifications aren't that earth shattering, but they do make quite a difference. So first of all, I have a piece of leftover poly sheet that's cut out just to provide more uniform load spreading on that shelf. And then on the top, this is actually just a piece of leftover scrap MDF that I had laying around and I've cut it to fit. All I did was cut the corners off here. Couldn't be bothered to carefully cope them around the, the legs. And then having done that, just sprayed it white with just a can of, a rattle can of paint. And then I've drilled holes in the board for all the different chuck keys that I need for the different chucks. And that keeps them all nice and tidy and out of the way. And on this side, I've uh, made a simple bracket to hold these three items, which I need in regular attendance. This is my ER40 collet wrench. This is the wrench for the top of the Allurus tool post and this is my mallet which I need to get the chucks on and off with well off so that whole thing was cheap and it took half an hour to make and the board is secured underneath with a couple of strips and screws so it doesn't move around Now the beauty of that is I can shove it right out of the way or when I'm actually working on the lathe, bring it back out so everything is in easy reach. So now I've also made these two trays. This one I used to have on my old Grizzly lathe and it was sized to fit a recess in the top of the cover on the headstock. And then this new one I've made for this machine. Um, and these are really simple. These are just pieces of scrap plywood cut to size, glued together and painted. And then this is drawer liner, rubber drawer liner that's stuck in place. And this just means that I can have tools relevant to the job I'm working on right at hand. And then you just move them all out of the way. Easy peasy. I like that. I like these trays. They work really well. Um, I don't know why I have this stupid rug thing on here. It's, uh, it's excellent for catching chips that fly around and then making it very difficult to get them off and get rid of them. But having the tools that you need for the, the work that you're doing close at hand is fantastic. Just makes working on the machine that much easier. I do get a lot of satisfaction out of making simple accessories like this. Two reasons. Firstly, most importantly, helps me keep my work area organized 
neat and tidy, which I like, and that plays into the safety factor when everything's well organized and to hand and not in a mess. That inherently leads to safer working practices. But the other thing is it's inexpensive and it didn't take very long to make. There's a lot of accessories around machine tools that people make on YouTube that are frankly beautiful. They are amazing uh, craftsmanship that they put into them. Um, but it's a lot of effort. And if that's your thing, that's, that's awesome. Um, this kind of thing is not my thing. I just like to have it. So, you know, 10, 15 minutes to make real simple trays out of scraps of plywood um, and, you know, cost of maybe $50 for this uh, trolley cart and the materials for this and, uh, you know, perfectly good accessory. So not everything has to be an artisan piece of craftsmanship. It's the engines that I make that I want to be that these things are a means to an end. So that's why I make them this way. Not the prettiest accessories, but very functional and I like them. Here we are at the coolant reservoir and pump end of the machine, which is underneath the tailstock. Reservoir holds about four and a half to five gallons of coolant. That's US gallons, not British gallons. British gallons are larger and taste a lot better, and they have to be served at cellar temperature. Uh, so more appropriate that we use US gallons. Today is actually a landmark day that you're witnessing because unusually I've actually thought ahead and before I filled the reservoir up, I removed the plug that comes with the machine and I've replaced it with this valve arrangement. It's, the valve arrangement is pointing that way so that it is and pointing straight out to act as a uh, shin uh, injurer, um, which of course leaves the drain handle nicely exposed. But I'm going to take that off. There's a nut here. I'm going to remove the handle so that I don't accidentally bump into that and drain the coolant all over the floor at some future date, uh, which would be hilarious, but I don't want to do that. Interestingly, this is the first NPT valve that I've ever had that has a metric nut on it, so I don't know what that's about. Coolant is easily added to the reservoir, either through the hatch here, uh, but there's also a fill spout on top of the base, which you can access with a long funnel. I suppose thinking about it, I could just put this plug in here as a safety feature. Still going to leave the handle off. Handle's going to live there. Made a little modification to the coolant dispensing line here. All I did was add this extension in. The line that comes with it it's kind of a stretch to get it where you need it. So I stole this idea from Josh Topper over at Topper Machine um, because I had these on hand rather than order a longer one of these. And now, now I can readily move this around to wherever it needs to go. So that's good, I like that, that's good. When we get to this first shoulder, we'll be at a quarter inch depth of cut. Oh, 
ball moves rather quickly, so you have to have your wits about you. Nice chips forming off of that. Let's have a look at that surface. Again, a lovely finish. I don't know what kind of steel this is. In my first test of the lathe when I ran coolant, I discovered that the jaws of the chuck were past the splash shield. So I've made a couple of changes. First of all, I made a new actuator shaft for the splash shield so I could move the shield out and completely cover the jaws of the chuck. The other thing I've done is made this additional uh, splash guard because with the rotation of the chuck, typical rotation coming this way. It will fling coolant off to the back here and up in this area uh, all over the place. So this is a guard I just fabricated and I'm going to test out today, see if that just helps contain the splash. Now you'll see there's a gap here and when you open this that impacts on that which is very annoying. But the reason for that is I also have to make a riser block for this to bring this up another uh, two and a half inches because with this splash guard where it is, I can't put a 16 inch diameter workpiece in here. And I do actually need to do that. I've got a job in where I need that clearance. So I have to make a block to lift this up and then this will all work together. It helps, but I'm going to need to lift this up to get rid of this gap. And I, I need a smaller nozzle on that thing. Splash cards kind of sort of worked. Uh, still think I want a smaller nozzle, but you get the idea. On these higher material removal rates, it's uh, really nice to have coolant because these chips come off of here stinking hot. Um, not that I do that a lot, but there's a time and a place for it, and I'm just glad to have a machine that can do it. So anyway, that's another piece of the machine up and running. This is uh, 
I think it's 316 stainless steel. It's either 304 or 316. And the uh, machine was making short work of that. I turned it from four inches down to about one inch here, just screwing around. So it's costing me a fortune, all this testing. I need to get on and actually make something worthwhile.